Padme lands at the opening scene of the film, and she's going to the Senate. Originally, there was a scene where she went to the Senate and gave an impassioned speech against the Republic raising an army. She comes into the Senate very dramatically. She makes her huge plea. The scene also contained the debate amongst the senators about should they have an army or not have an army? Were the Jedi strong enough to uh, defend the Republic? The Senate scene was a lot of talking, it slowed things down. We had a film that was way too long. It got a little political in the very beginning, and a lot of the things that were in that scene we could have achieved in a much quicker way. We thought that the beginning of the film was just too slow. It took too long for the story to get going. So it became very uh, almost immediately apparent that that was a scene that was going to have to be cut down considerably. And that was one of the first things to go because we really wanted to get into the story faster and get really to the mystery of who was trying to kill her and put the emphasis on her danger rather than the large sort of political issues that were involved. Must I remind the senator from Malister that negotiations are continuing with the separatists. Peace is our objective here, not war. My noble colleagues, less than an hour ago, an assassination attempt was made against my life. One of my bodyguards and six others were ruthlessly and senselessly murdered. I was the target, but more importantly, the security measure before you was the target. I have led the opposition to building this army, and someone will stop at nothing to assure its passage. Wake up, Senators! You must wake up! If you offer the Separatists violence, they can only show violence in return. Many will lose their lives, all will lose their freedom. I pray you do not let fear push you into disaster. Vote down the security measure, which is nothing less than a declaration of war. Does anyone here want that? I cannot believe they do. Due to the lateness of the hour and the seriousness of this motion, we will take up these matters tomorrow. Until then, the Senate is adjourned. Once the mystery of who the assassin is comes up in the story and Obi-Wan is assigned to follow up the clues, and it was a scene where he went to the Jedi analysis room to see if the source of that dart, which he had pulled out of the neck of the bounty hunter, could be determined by the information in the Jedi um, archives. The interesting thing about the temple analysis sequence was it was one of the first sequences finished. When we looked at the movie, finally all cut together and everything, it seemed like we were going back in another direction. Essentially, what happens in the analysis room is that the droids tell him that they don't know anything. And so at the beginning of the scene, we don't know anything. And at the end of the scene, Obi-Wan still doesn't know anything. So it really seemed uh, unnecessary to have that scene in the movie. Place a subject for analysis on the sensor tray, please. It's a toxic dart. I need to know where it came from and who made it. One moment, please. identified. As you can see on your screen, subject weapon does not exist in any known culture. Probably self-made by a warrior not associated with any known society. Stand away from the sensor tray, please. Thank you for your assistance. I know who can identify this. 
the sequence with Mace and Obi-Wan on the landing platform, that was really changed around. I realized I needed to add different dialogue and make it a different scene and put Yoda in the scene and use it earlier in the movie. I moved it up. There was also kind of a jockeying around in the story of how much do the Jedi know and when do they know it. If the Jedi really know that there's something wrong but can't do anything about it, then they seemed weak. I had actually at one point uh, in the script had another scene between Mace and Yoda. And so ultimately what this is, is this is co combining the scene with Mace and Yoda and the scene with Mace and Obi-Wan, putting them into one scene, and then by taking out the, the starships and everything and moving it into the temple, I was able to move it forward uh, in the movie into reel two uh, from reel three where it started. It appears someone doesn't want us to know about this Camino system. Which means there's something happening on that system that we should know about. Master, do you think a Jedi could have erased those files? I hope not. But this disturbance in the Force is making it hard to get a sense of things. I'm concerned for my Padawan. He is not ready to be on his own. If the prophecy is true, he is the one who will bring balance to the Force. But he still has much to learn. His skills have made him, well, arrogant. I realize now what you and Master Yoda knew from the beginning. The boy was too old to start his training. Master, we should not have been given this assignment. I fear Anakin will not be able to protect the Senator. Why? He has an emotional connection with her. It's been there since he was a boy. Now he's confused, distracted. Obi-Wan, you must have faith that he will choose the right path. Yes, Master. The original script had uh, a number of scenes in which Padme and Anakin had long talks in which they talked about their past, about their feelings. And in particular, uh, the backstory of Padme Amidala was fleshed out. She talks about where she grew up and the relationship with her parents and her family. That was more of a, uh, an issue of character on her part, on his part, and on the same time, uh, talking a little bit about elected officials, about term limits. It was all good backstory information, but it took many minutes to get it out. I didn't particularly like the dialogue in that sequence. I thought it went on for too long, and I didn't know how we could sustain it. And I think George felt basically the same way. When you really cut it into the movie and you looked at it, it had some interesting points. It had a nice grand location that we had but ultimately it didn't move the plot along. You cut it in, it's way too long. You realize that you don't need to know that information, and you realize that the only really important part is the middle part, as they're crossing the bridge. You cut it out, and it works, and if you can make a skillful enough edit, nobody notices, and it's, it's flawless. When I first started my training, I was very homesick, and very lonely. But I'd always feel better when I thought about the palace, the way it shimmers in the sunlight, the way the air always smells of flowers, and the soft sound of the distant waterfalls. When I first saw the capital, I was very young, and I'd never seen a waterfall before. I thought they were so beautiful. <laughs> I never dreamed that one day I'd be living in the palace. Tell me, did you dream of power and politics when you were a little girl? No, that was the last thing I thought of. I wasn't the youngest queen ever elected. 
But now that I think back on it, I'm not sure I was old enough. I'm not sure I was ready. The people you served thought you did a good job. I heard they even tried to amend the Constitution so you could stay in office. Popular rule is not democracy, Annie. It gives the people what they want, not what they need. I was relieved when my two terms were up. So were my parents. They were very worried about me during the blockade. They couldn't wait for it all to be over. Actually, I'd hoped to have a family of my own by now. My sister has the most amazing, wonderful kids. But when the queen asked me to serve as senator, I couldn't refuse her. I agree with her. I think the Republic needs you. I'm glad that you chose to serve. The scene in the parents' house was very difficult to cut out because I really liked that scene and I really, it went a long way to establishing what Padme's problems were as the fact that she was really avoiding getting married, uh, that she really shouldn't still be in public service, she didn't have to be in public service, that uh, Anakin actually cared about her, and uh, that she was kind of in denial. She liked him, but she wasn't going to talk about it. Once again, this was an interesting backstory kind of scene. It allowed you to, once again, see Padme's relationship to her loved ones, there was an opportunity for uh, Anakin to be displayed as the boyfriend or escort to the parents, and they could sense her uh, romantic interest in him, perhaps. You know, there's a lot of yearning in that sequence. You can see Anakin's not only very protective, but also that he's very enamored of her. They obviously see that instantly. We find out that, you know, she's never brought anybody of her boyfriend's home. She claims he's not a boyfriend, but we can also tell that for the first time that she is starting to melt. But when I, again, got very hard-nosed about the length of the film and looking at it, I realized that those ideas were already conveyed in a lot of the other scenes. Once again, we experimented by taking the scene out such that the scenes before it and after it were now connected. And when you do that, sometimes you just discover that the movie more quickly moves to the next important point for the audience. Sister Sola. Hello, Anakin. Hello. And this is my mother. Hello. You made it just in time for dinner. I hope you're hungry, Anakin. A little. He's being polite, Mom. We're starving. Well, you've come to the right place at the right time. Oh, honey, it's so good to see you safe. We were so worried. Dear. I know, I know. But I had to say it. Now it's done. Did you know, Anakin, you're the first boyfriend my sister's ever brought home? He's not my boyfriend. Anakin's a friend. We've known each other for years. He's a Jedi assigned to me by the Senate to protect me. A bodyguard? Oh, Padme, they didn't tell us it was that serious. It's not, I promise. I'm not in any danger, Mom. Is she? Yes, um, I'm afraid she is. Why haven't you told us about him? What's there to talk about? He's just a boy. A boy? Have you seen the way he looks at you? Sola, stop it. It's obvious he has feelings for you. Anakin and I are friends. Our relationship is strictly professional.
The scene in Padme's bedroom was an interesting scene because it was about the two of them just talking. And he, for the first time, was not only seeing her room, which is a private thing, but also he was seeing a little bit of her history. It was a little backstory for her to fill out her character, to make you understand a little bit more about her. You understand that she has a lot of compassion. There was a thematic point made of those who can't adapt die. That was good information about what her perspective was, especially her humanitarian efforts and her pacifist um, energies, that she was a leader of kind of a peace movement. There was a wonderful idea that George had. He had a set of five picture frames that he wanted to put into the room, that he wanted to eventually put in the basic history of how she grew up as a young girl, some of the leadership qualities that she had. It's emotionally touching. It gives her a lot of character, but ultimately in the story it wasn't really that necessary. So you still live at home? I move around so much. I've never had a place of my own. Official residences have no warmth. I feel good here. I feel at home. Never really had a home. Home was always where my mom was. Hmm. Is this you? That was when I went with the relief group. Their sun was imploding and the planet was dying. I was helping relocate all the children. See that little one I'm holding? His name was Nakitulo, which means sweetheart. He was so full of life. They all were. They were never able to adapt, to live off their native planet. They all died. My first day as an apprentice legislator. That was the difference. After Padme and Anakin were captured in the droid factory, they were then interrogated by Count Dooku and then put on trial. When I finished the movie and I looked at it, I realized that the movie began to pick up speed uh, or needed to pick up speed when Anakin and Padme landed on Geonosis and was ready to find Obi-Wan. What you're interested in at that point is, are they going to find Obi-Wan? Are they going to free him? Because I realized that when I put the film together, there was a long space without Obi-Wan or knowing where Obi-Wan was. My original conception was that you would, that would all be a mystery. But then when I cut the film together, I looked at it, I said, it isn't that good as a mystery. We no, need to keep not checking not back with Obi-Wan, know where he is, know what danger he's in, know what's going on with him. So I figured I'd take the scene, really, with Padme and Doku and rewrite it so that it was a scene of uh, Doku tempting Obi-Wan rather than Doku tempting Padme. You're holding a Jedi Knight, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm formally requesting you hand him over to me now. We don't recognize the Republic here, Senator. But if Naboo were to join our alliance, I could easily hear your plea for clemency. And if I don't join your rebellion? The Republic cannot be fixed, my lady. It is time to start over. I know of your treaties with the Trade Federation, the Commerce Guilds, and the others count. I will not forsake all I have honored and worked for and betray the Republic. Without your cooperation, I've done all I can for you. Oh. There's a sequence in the film where Dooku basically pronounced sentence and tells Padme and Anakin that they're going to be executed unless they support him and help him, and they refuse. The trial scene was just a little sort of addendum to the, this giant scene where they have this conference between Padme and uh, Doku. As the story developed, there was an attempt to create a deliberate ambiguity about Doku. He might be a good guy, he might be a bad guy. 
and scenes like the trial made him a bad guy before we wanted to know that fact. We didn't want the evil side of Dooku to be overtly stated until the very end of the movie when he meets with the Emperor. When the conversation scene with Dooku went out, the trial automatically went out too. And once I did that, it moved in a very straight line rather than sort of stopping along the way for these little side stories. You're committing an act of war, Archduke. I hope you're prepared for the consequences. Get on with it. Carry out the sentence. I want to see her suffer. Oh, <laughs> my